Hi there, everyone, and welcome to Paper Wishes Weekly Webisodes. I'm Sarah Newman, and today I'm so excited to show you some fabulous chipboard embellishments. These are great fun to work with, and even better, they can be altered in all kinds of cool ways. So today we're going to play with six chipboard collections, and I'll take you through each of the collections before we get into the techniques. So you can see we have the swirl collection. We also have birds and branches. There's the Boo chipboard collection, perfect for Halloween. There's the Winter's Butterfly set. We also have the Cutesy Christmas. And finally, the Christmas Sparkle collection. Now, each one of these packs contains a six inch by six inch piece of chipboard filled with laser cut images. Now, laser cutting means that the chipboard has basically been cut with a beam of light, which sounds really cool. And it also means that each one of these has incredible detail. Now, if you flip the pieces over, you'll see that on the other side, because of that laser cutting, you've got a sort of a vintage tinge to it. So it's from the, the laser cutting process itself. Now, you'll probably also notice that excepting for the word motifs on here, you can actually use the pieces either the front or the back. So just depending on how you want those pieces to face. Now, you probably already see that they're quite easy to remove from the chipboard piece. You just need to pop them out and then you will have some beautiful accent pieces. Of course, you can use these just as they are if you want to, but there are also some really, really fun ways that you can alter these, and that's what we're going to be playing with today. So today I have eight techniques for altering your chipboard pieces, and I'm sure that this is just the tip of the iceberg. As you watch, you'll probably think of even more ways to create your own customized embellishments. So as you can see, we have a lot to explore today, and I am so very glad you're here. Come play with us. Probably the easiest way to personalize your chipboard is with a marker. Now you can use lots of different kinds of markers. The one I'm using today is the Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend, and the color that I'm using is ice blue, and this is going to work beautifully on my um, snowflake from the Winter's Butterfly Collection. Now you might find in this case that it's easier to keep the chipboard in the, um, in the main piece rather than popping it out just gives you a little something extra to hold on to while you're doing your coloring and i'm just scribbling the marker on here of course i don't need to worry too much about staying in the lines and i'm working on a craft sheet so it doesn't really matter if i accidentally get in the center area there so let me just finish cl clearing this up here getting all of those white pieces colored with this beautiful blue and then what I can do is simply pop this out from my backing sheet. You can see I have a really pretty little snowflake embellishment. And just pop that onto a piece of white cardstock and I am ready to go. And don't forget, you can use either side. So you might choose to get some of that beautiful brownish tinge from the laser cutting if you wanted to have that as well. So that's the first technique, quick and easy to do with markers. Now, our second technique is featuring inking as well, but this time you're using some ink pads. And this is a great way to get a fun multicolored effect. So you can use pigment ink, dye ink, you can use distress ink, or even embossing ink, and we'll get to that one later. But this is really just as simple as pressing the ink pad directly onto the chipboard shape. Now, in this case, I'm using a leaf from the Birds and Branches collection. And I'm starting with the Honey Pot ink. So I'm just going to rub this directly onto my chipboard shape. So that's the first layer of ink. And I could leave this as it is, but I thought I'd also add in a little bit of brown. Let me turn this the right way. And this is the Seal Brown. Now you'll notice with the Honey Pot and with the Seal Brown that these are water reactive dyes which means that I can add some water on here if I want to get even more of a uh, dimensional look. So I'm just going to kind of tap this on here. I'm not going to cover it completely. And then I'm just going to mist it with a little bit of water. 
and bring in, you can either use a cloth or a tissue to kind of dab off some of the excess color. And that will give you some really pretty um, different tones on your leaf. Now, just to add a third color on here, this one is the, also by Spectrum Noir. This is the Midas, and this is in uh, metallic pigment gold. And this is just going to give us an extra layer of shine and uh, kind of a pretty metallic look. Just applying that directly onto the chipboard. Quick and easy to do. So I'm going to kind of clean off my craft sheet here. And then let's take a look at how you could use this. So you definitely want to let your piece dry before you start handling it. And I've got one that is already dry. And I've just put this onto a square of uh, plain cardstock. And I've got a card base all ready to go. This one is using some pattern papers from the Dotted Duos number one collection and some autumn colors. Of course, I have a dazzle border on there. And if I were to simply pop this down right onto the front, and maybe add a little ribbon tied into a bow on here, maybe afterwards adding a stamp sentiment or a dazzle sentiment on here. And I think I have a really pretty and very easy to do autumn greeting card. One of my favorite techniques is to use heat embossing on chipboard. And to do this, you're simply going to press your embossing ink pad onto the chipboard piece, add your embossing powder and heat set. So let's try this with the cute little cat from the Boo collection. I'm also using the translucent clear ink pad, which will be my embossing ink pad. And I also have some gold tinsel embossing powder. So what I'm going to do is working onto my heat resistant craft sheet, I'm simply going to take the embossing ink pad and press it directly onto my chipboard piece. Now, as with the marker coloring, you might decide to keep your chipboard piece in the main piece that it comes in, if that makes it a little bit easier for you to handle. So now that I have my little cat all inked, I'm going to put him inside a folded piece of scrap paper and then take my embossing powder and just add this on top. And you can be quite generous with that embossing powder because we're going to tap off any excess and just put that right back into the jar. So you can see my little kitty cat is all gold. I'll keep him on my craft sheet and then just simply funnel the rest of my embossing powder back into the jar and nothing goes to waste. Now, very important, put the lid back on the jar before you get your heat tool out. You may want to have something to kind of hold your item in place. So I'm just going to use a pokey tool here and then heat set to melt the embossing powder. Okay, now that my embossing powder has melted, I have this beautiful shiny little kitty cat. Now the embossing powder is still molten, it's still hot, so I want to be very careful when I'm handling this, but I'm going to move her to one side so that we can take a look at another couple of items that I've done with the same technique. Also from the Boo Collection, I've got this sweet little pumpkin, which I think is a lot of fun when done in the gold embossing powder. And I was also doing a couple of swirls earlier from the swirls pack. Now this one I just kept in that backing sheet because I was holding on to it while I was heat setting it. So you can do either way, whichever way is easiest for you to handle. Now another piece that I did is this beautiful wreath and this is from the Winter's Butterfly set. And I've added some pastel flat pearls on here. Now let's take a look I've got a card that I've covered with pattern papers from the Christmas Sparkle paper pack. I've added a sentiment on here with dazzles. Now, what does this look like if I just simply put that wreath right on top 
I think it is such a quick and easy way to get a very elegant look. And don't forget, you can also mix and match the collections too. So I have a pretty pine bow from the Christmas Sparkle Chipboard set, which I've also done with uh, the gold embossing powder. And you could simply add that right down on the bottom so that you've got some balance created here on that wreath. Quick and easy to do. I think heat embossing is a fantastic way to use your chipboard embellishments. A new favorite for me is a product called Fluffy Stuff, and this is from Creative Expressions. Fluffy Stuff is a specially formulated medium that gives the result of a fluffy texture when you apply it to your surface. And it could be fluffy, or it could be furry, or it could be feathery. So I'm going to take the penguin from the Cutesy Christmas set, and I've inked the penguin's body with uh, stamping ink, as we've seen earlier. So some black and then brown on his feet. And I could take this layered piece and just pop it down on here and add his hat and we'll be ready to go. But I thought I would add a fluffy texture to this. So I'm going to move aside this part of his body and then simply apply the fluffy stuff directly onto the chipboard. Now it has a really fine tip so that you can make sure to get around in some of those detail areas. And I'm just going to apply this all over the entire piece. So I've made sure to cover this pretty well. Now the next step I need to do is bring in my heat tool again, but as before, I'm going to use a tool just to hold this in place so it doesn't blow away. So stay with me while I do my heat setting. Okay, now it took a couple of seconds, but I think you saw the magic that happens. So unlike an embossing powder, this isn't going to melt and lie flat and smooth. Instead, it's going to bubble up as you're heat setting it. And then you have a really sweet, fluffy or feathery little critter. Now, again, I need to let this cool before I can handle it. So I'm going to kind of scoot it off to one side and show you my completed penguin chipboard piece. Now for this one, I was using some Decofoil Metallics Gel to color the background instead of the ink. So I'll show you that in the next technique. I've added a little pearl up at the top and his hat. All of these elements are in the chipboard set. So you have his beak and you've got his hat. And of course you've got the various parts of his body. Such a cute way to add some texture and some fun to your chipboard pieces. Metallics gel is a really fun medium that's designed for use with stencils, but it can also be used straight onto chipboard for easy texture and dimension and a really subtle metallic look. So for this project, I'm going to take the deer from the Christmas Sparkle chipboard set and I'm going to color it with the aged copper gel. So all you need to do is just get some of the medium out of the jar and I like to use a palette knife for this. As I get this out, I think you can see the consistency of it. It's really thick. It's not drippy or runny, so you don't need to have a whole lot. In fact, I've probably got a bit more than I need. But this is going to give a really pretty look. When you apply it, all you need to do is think of it like maybe frosting a cake. You just need to dab this on. And as you're doing so, when you're lifting up with your palette knife or your spatula, you're going to get some raised texture on here. It's really easy to do and quite quick as well. So you don't need to have a whole lot. I like to start with a little bit and then add more as I'm going if needed. 
Now, when you're going into some of the detail areas, some of the smaller areas of any image, you want to be a little bit lighter handed, but don't worry about any blobs that you may be getting in here. I have a little trick for clearing those up. So I'm just going to be dabbing some more of this medium on here. Just get a bit more from the jar whenever I need it and apply this on here. I'll get his legs and his feet, his hooves and antlers. And you may decide to leave some of the area uncovered if you need something to kind of hold on to while you're working. That's also fine. And just dab a little bit more onto his antlers here. And then what I'm going to do is take a toothpick and make sure I can get in and around any of those detail areas. So I'm going to gently pick him up here. I think I've got some excess going on in the back. So I'll just scrape that off, kind of clean up my craft sheet a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a toothpick or whatever kind of um, maybe a, a pokey tool or some other tool that you might have on hand and just sort of clean up any of the excess that may be in and among some of the detail areas of your element. And then all you need to do, once you've got that part all done, just let this dry. You let it dry for about an hour and then you will have a piece that looks like this. So this one is completely dry and you can see how pretty that is and how soft and shiny that looks. And you've also got some raised texture and dimension on there. So if I were to grab a card front that I've decorated already with some paper from the Christmas Sparkle set, I've got some gold inking around the outside edge and a strip of that paper from the set in there just going along as a border. And I can just simply pop the deer right down like so. And if I want to add a coordinating piece, so this is the Believe also from the same chipboard set. In this case, though, I've done the gold embossing on here, as we learned about earlier, and I could add that on there, and I could add a ribbon from the gold set. I could add some gemstones and some other elements on there as well, but I think that gives just a really pretty and quite quick and easy card design, and one that's got a lot of texture and dimension on it. So that's using the Deco Foil Metallics Gel. Let's take a look at another favorite, which is Opal Polish. So we're going to be doing a little bit with the opal polish for this technique. And here I'm using the Summer Sky. This is from Creative Expressions, and it's a gorgeous medium that gives a really iridescent effect on any porous surface, which means that it is perfect for use with our chipboard. Now, as we've learned in other webisodes, all you need to do to use your opal polish, just undo the lid. You've got the sponge included in here. So all you need to do, just pick up a little bit of that medium on your sponge and simply apply it right onto your chipboard. So I'm using one of the snowflakes from the Cutesy Christmas chipboard collection. And all you have to do is just dab it right on there. Now in this case, I've left the snowflake in the backing piece and you can decide to do that or choose not to. You can leave it to one color. You can also come back and add a second color. And in this case, I've got the blue wisteria. So the same process as before, just get that sponge loaded with a little bit of the medium and you can add that right on top. So you can do two colors, you can do more colors, you can mix and match if you want to but it's a really quick and easy way to get a beautiful iridescent effect on your chipboard pieces. So let me bring in uh, just a piece of white cardstock so you can see this is the one where we've left it in the chipboard. You can also, of course, whoops, you can also pop them out. So here I've got the outside piece and I've got the inside piece of that snowflake. And now of course you can use other colors as well because opal polish comes in a lot of different colors. Here's one that I've done from the Birds and Branches, and this is using Lilac Rose. Another one from the Birds and Branches, this one is using the Blue Wisteria. So you can see that you can get lots of different effects here using one color or using two if you prefer.
Glitter Kiss from Creative Expressions gives glittering highlights a really lovely touch of sparkle and perfect for chipboard pieces. So the chipboard that I'm working with is from the Swirls collection, and I think you can see that I have three elements on here. So I have an outside frame, an inside frame, and this beautiful and very detailed swirl motif in the center. While I'm doing my application, I'm going to keep everything nested together and in the main chipboard piece. I've just cut this out so it's a little bit easier to handle. Now, as with the opal polish, all you need to do is dab this on and you can use the applicator that's included in the jar. So what I'm going to do is just pick up a little bit of the medium on the sponge, kind of clear off some of the excess. And what I want to do because of this really intricate detail in here, I want to apply my glitter kiss with a tapping motion rather than scrubbing it in, in a circular motion. And that's just because there's so much detail in here. If I really am scrubbing it in, it can get into some of those detail areas and sort of clog them up. And that can be cleared up, but I'll save myself the, the time and the effort with that toothpick. And instead just kind of tap this on. And you don't need to have very much, a light touch will do. You can always go back and add more if you want to and just go around the outside here and make sure you've got that color on there. And then all you need to do is let your piece dry. So I've got a piece that is already dry here. And you can see how pretty that is. Now this is just the center element, so I've already taken away that larger frame and I'll show that to you in a second because I want to add another bit of color in here as well. So you can leave this as is. You can also add a little bit more medium to it. So in this case, I'm going to come back to our opal polish, and this is the summer sky we just used, and I'm going to apply some of this just right on top. Again, using the sponge that's included in the jar, scrape off some excess. You don't need a whole lot. And then dab this on right on top of that glitter kiss. Now I did let the glitter kiss dry before I went to add more of this on here. And this is going to create a really cool effect because the Glitter Kiss is essentially acting as a resist to that opal polish, which is going to give a really beautiful look. Now, I'll need to let that dry, but what I'm gonna do is just bring in a piece of scrap paper here, and you can see I've got the outside frame that I've done this technique with. I have the inside, which still has that beautiful motif in there, and I can just, pop that out and then you can see my three layers on here. It looks so pretty. It almost has kind of a weathered patina to it. Now I can keep everything nested if I want to. I can also do some mixing and matching here if I wanted to create some different effects. There's also a really pretty swirl and I just couldn't resist. I had to get a little bit of color on there as well. So this is how you can use either Glitter Kiss alone or in combination with another medium, which I think is a lot of fun. Now our very last technique that I want to show you is using Luna Paste, also from Creative Expressions. And this is a really quick and easy way to get some beautiful color onto your chipboard. So I've got the bird from the Birds and Branches on here and I've left it again in the main piece of chipboard. Now with Luna Paste, you can apply this medium with a brush, with a palette knife. You can also use your finger if you want to. So let me just get a little bit of this color here on my finger. I'm gonna hold down the main piece of chipboard and just dab this on. Again, you don't need to have a whole lot. A little bit will work just fine. And just gently rub this onto your chipboard piece like so. All you need to do is let that dry. You can always add more color to it if you want to or mix and match your colors. Here's another one of the birds just done with one coat of that um, same Luna Paste and that was in the Stellar Jade color. Very pretty and again, quick and easy to do. So now that you've seen some of the techniques you can do with the chipboard, let's take a look at a few card projects. Our first card project features the fluffy stuff on the cutesy Christmas chipboard polar bear. And I applied the fluffy stuff to the entire bear, except for this area where his hat will go. As you can see, the hat is a separate element. So I covered this with pattern paper and a little bit of cardstock and then glued it right on top. I used some direct to paper inking for his face. So I used the plum jam on his muzzle 
and the seal brown for his nose and mouth, and then just glued those elements all together on top of the bear. Now you can also add a little bit of definition around his legs, and for that I use the brown gray tri-blend marker, and I use that just directly on top of that fluffy stuff, and it worked perfectly. Now, as you can see, your polar bear can face to the left or the right, just depending on which side of that chipboard piece you use. So the choice is up to you. For the rest of my card, I just used the cutesy Christmas pattern paper set and a little bit of ribbon on there, a couple of dazzles at top and bottom, and I am ready to go. Now you can get a very different look with our second card, and this one is featuring the rose copper glitter kiss that's been applied to the swirls chipboard. And after that dried, I applied a light touch of the Lilac Rose Opal Polish, and that's going to give us that beautiful resist effect. The word thankful has been inked with a black stamping ink pad, and I think these elements just coordinate perfectly with the denim bouquet pattern papers. Again, all I needed to add was a dazzle top and bottom, and a little bit of ribbon on here as well. Now, if you're wondering what kind of adhesive to use for some of these detail elements, I can always recommend the Cosmic Acrylic Glue because it's a great glue and also because it has a really fine applicator, which means that it works perfectly for really detailed elements that you're gluing. Now the third card I want to show you is using elements from the Chipboard Birds and Branches set. And I inked the leaves and the fern with the Pine Tree Stamping Ink and then I added them to pattern papers in the Floral Abundance set. Now the bird was colored with Gilded Apricot Opal Polish, which I also used to edge the outside of my card and also my pattern paper piece on here. And again, all I needed to add was a little bow and then a dazzle sentiment down here as well. Now I thought I'd take us back to some of the card projects that we got partially finished earlier in the webisode. You'll remember this one with the embossing. And again, I've got two elements on here. All I did was add a bow, and this is from the Light Pink Ribbons Collection, and I think it's quite a quick and easy design, and one that comes together quite nicely. The other card that I'll remind you of is this one using the inked leaves. Now, you'll remember that I did the inking on here, and I also did two additional leaves. These two I've backed with some contrasting cardstock, just to give them a little bit of extra dimension added those up onto the background paper, and that's from the Dotted Duos number one collection. I've added a Dazzle's border and then also some words on here as well, a ribbon, and it's a nice, fun, fall, festive card, I think. The last card that I'll remind you of is this one here. Again, I didn't add a whole lot more to it than we saw earlier. I've got the deer, I've got that beautiful believe, and of course, some Dazzle's top and bottom, a little bit of ribbon. And I added some more dazzles here on the card as well. So I think that you've seen just some of the possibilities for using these versatile chipboard pieces. And I suspect you are going to come up with even more great ways to put them to use. I'm so very glad that you joined me today and I can hardly wait to see what you create. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for being a part of the Paper Wishes family. We're really glad that you're here with us. Please be sure to leave a comment because we love to hear what you think. Each item can be purchased separately and you can see those below. However, we've also bundled them into a creative money saver just for you. For that money saver, just see this webisode on paperwishes.com.